and welcome back. And it is warm. Isn't that right, Lily Bear? That's a sweet girl. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pumping time. Yes, I know. We talked about it in the last video, getting the steam cleaner out to blast these drains out. Right now, it's quicker for me just to uh, dump this over because I have a sneaking suspicion. I know that drain's running. I know that, I'm trying to point with the camera here. That drain is running and I have a sneaking suspicion the drain that's under there is running. The only one that's not running is this one. So, if I can chuck that over there and then deal with it later. Because I've seen cats standing and drinking in this. And I think we've got a third baby that needs to be medicated. So we're going to get that done tonight when me and Mrs. Piper Doug do our walkthrough. So I think that is there. Yeah, Mrs. Piper Doug was finding out one of our one of our neighbors, kind of on the other side of town, neighbor still. Um, their sons, uh, they've been calving for a month or two now and uh, yeah, he's lost some calves to Coxie. They're having a really bad go with Coxie right now. So, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of bad luck, but this is the big thing is to get this water out of here, especially now that it's mild, it's going to start really coming on quick. So, the other pump is running, this pump is now going, dump this and uh, tomorrow is bedding day. Yeah, I don't, not really pressed to get it done today, so yeah. But they've still got lots of the yeah, diatomaceous earth. So, we've got uh, Ian, the big girl from last video. She has finally calved. She had a lovely big heifer. And royalty calved over here on the first time her two year olds. So, Squish has had her baby, little boy. Squish's boy. Squint Eastwood. Ha 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 ha! Oh, it's just so much fun. It's Bud Light. Jet Star. Anyway, <clears throat> get pumping. So, yeah. Now that it's starting to get above freezing, you got to start doing the old. Walk in the pans. Hi, Phoenix. Um, because of that. Now, there's only one cab that's really showing that it's got it. Uh, like I said. it sporadically but as soon as you know it's starting that sort of a grey poop that's the only ones that I've found so far so um, this is her uh, here so she's, she's good but you can see she's starting to be affected she's about five percent off so Keeping an eye on ones like this. Ones that just sort of hold back a little bit. Uh, you're good. You are now on my radar. Especially considering you're royalty. Hmm. Do I medicate you now or wait? Hmm. I'll check you later tonight. Anyway, so yeah, it's kind of crappy, but it's you got to do it every year, and that's the irony. Even people that scour guard the cows, they still have to do it. So, yeah, the calf does not look like a whole heck of a lot to that big cow, but that's actually quite a big calf. That calf's at least a hundred, hundred, hundred maybe five pounds. I know, it's not a lot of cab to come out of a cow that's sort of close to 2,000 pounds, but it's alive and it's healthy, so yeah. Anyway, do my tour. Holy moly. So, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Thanks for uh, 
clicking on the video if I haven't already said that. Hey Maggie. Oh geez, the cat. Sorry. Sorry, you're poking the eye. Might be some. That's better. So yeah, um. Look at that. That's craziness. Okay. That's the high setting. That's crazy. Okay, I keep it in the low setting. So, uh, Mrs. Piper Doug, she likes to come out and do the 10 o'clock check. And then she will wake me up after my evening nap. And, uh, and she heads to bed. And then I've got the helm after that. So, come out at 12 o'clock to do the midnight check. And I come through the gates there and I just happen to look up massive shooting star like meteor type deal burning up coming into the atmosphere like a trail of like stardust coming off of it just beautiful i'm like wow i take a look up here and right in front of this bale there's lone star a little pair of feet sticking out i'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh so i run get the chains because i i always just go get the chains anyway because that's my go-to if i get the chains i shouldn't need them come out here one of the feet's upside down I'm like no but I noticed the knuckles bent so it looks like they're both front feet so I try to get the pen ready see if I can get her corralled but it's Lone Star so she doesn't she doesn't mind too much hey wee baby oh watch it mummy well that's not your mummy sorry um so I slip the chain on one foot and at that point Lone Star gets up, but she's not, she's not scared of me. So she goes to walk away. So I give her a little pull, so she stops. And then, so I get the chain on the other one, right enough. The feet are the right way around. The nose is right there. So we work together and get the baby out. So I gave her 15, 20 minutes while I went and washed the chains and did a walk through everybody else. And there she is. I'll turn the light off and it bugs them. So, we officially, pardon me, we officially have royalty in the house. Sorry, sweetie, I just got to turn it on a little bit. A little bit of chrome on this one, not a lot. So that leads me to believe this is Puddin' Pops, kid. So, yeah, this is a Jet descendant off of Jet Star. This is Lone Star. So a great grand kid. I'm not sure what it is yet. I didn't want to bug her too much. So she is loving on it. Talking to it fine. And ironically, this one is royalty because this is Squirtz's daughter and grandson over here. So she's just talking up a storm too. Because they're by they're best buddies. Squish and uh Lone Star are best buddies. And funnily enough, this is Eileen. And Eileen's mum just cabbed Eileen's sister in the other pen. That great big cow, that's Eileen. And if you get the scale, I am level here. That's Eileen. Yeah, she is her mother's daughter. Lovely heifer. We're programming her. She's starting to where we can pet her. You cannot pet Ian though. Nope, Ian's never been able to be petted. And we're okay, she's quiet, but she's not pettable. But Eileen has been wanting to be petted. So this is us starting. This is the programming starting to work now. This is one of the first or second time I've been able to touch her. That's good. We're making the headway. And yeah, so this is Squish off of Squirts. Her uh, niece is in here to calve in a few weeks, Squiggles. And this is Squish's son, Squint Eastwood. <laughs> you, you get the pad, anyway, anyway. So yeah, oh my gosh, that's awesome. What are we at, 68 now, 68 births? So, and oh my gosh, the whole yard just reeks of skunk. I don't know who got it. It's not the dog, thankfully. I don't know if it was one of the bulls or if it was one of the calves, probably, around the back. 
Oh, it just oh, it brings tears to your eyes. Anyway, I'm gonna go away and leave her because she's doing great. Tickety boo. Hey, you. Big boy. Big boy. Big galoot. Thumping. There's Phoenix. The wee girl that almost died. She was frozen, absolutely cardboard stiff. This is Piper Doug, helped save her life. That one ear half is gone, the other half is almost gone, just like a mama. Stop eating my wires! No! You're back in the same spot, you wee beggar. No, you don't. On you go. You wee off you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's never leaving this far. Yeah. That's mom. The white face right there with half ears. Just like daughter. Isn't that right, Ghosty? Ghosty is now a great, great grandmother. There's progeny for you. Eggy, sweetie. Oh, I know, the sun sets on you, doesn't it? Uh-huh, oh yeah. You won Mrs. Piper Doug's heart, and you're pretty close to mine too. Yeah, I see that. For those who are not acclimatized to having an extreme cold that's what happens to the ears and they end up like that it just turns to jerky and then it falls off yep. anyway yeah. Bumping. yeah i still don't have the rest of my hose in yet it's ordered so this is what's supposed to be happening so yeah this is four inch uh, PVC uh, septic conduit. So it goes out to there, past the other side of the road, and then it 45s into the lagoon. So there's a downpipe there, downpipe there. There is a downpipe where you just saw me standing, but it got broken. So the T is still there, it's just at ground level. So somewhere between here and there, it's frozen. And that's normally what happens throughout the system. But we've struck it very lucky that it's, it's thawed out somewhere back to here because the back one is running at surface level because the whole back lane is thawed out and this one, is, this one is running full open so we'll take the winds hey me babies so we are just almost at 70 baby 69 just born over there pugsley Hey Bowie, one of our kindest, kindest animals right there. Um, you're on a watch list. She makes a really weird noise when she's uh, belching up her cud. She's very, very, uh, she salivates a lot when she's belching up. Hey sweetie. So every day, after lunch, like I said, applicator, move you close, uh, pills, and then that is, bring it out for you. Let's see if we can get it the right way up so you can read it. Uh, I don't know if you can read that. Charcoal, charcoal paste. So, for the most part, diatomaceous earth is what helps balance the baby's uh, stomach as they're developing their uh, juices. Um, but if they get particularly uh, under the weather, charcoal is an absolute godsend. Because charcoal will coat the intestines and the stomach. That way it stops the fissures what cause the blood in the poop. So there's one there on the watch list, but I'm not medicating because you shouldn't just medicate right off the bat because to medicate means you destroy the gut health to restart it. But if it's spiting it itself, and that's where you've got that five to 10% window. When it goes from that to being, as the Scottish call, peely wally, wimpy. Um, yeah, hey Pugsley. So Pugsley's story, she's actually quite famous. 
Some of you might not realize you remember her. She gave birth at one years old. Her first calf she had right at one years old. Yeah, apparently that can happen. And I don't know if it's a case of uh, one year that one of the cal one of the bull calves, one of its little twig and berries got up, didn't get caught by the rubber ring and got back up inside the sack. She got served and they were in the cab pen and we, Celine's is kind of, the lens is kind of buggered. Um, they were in the yearling replacement uh, pen, but they were, we hadn't hauled away yet. So it was a whole pen full. And uh, my daughter Christina came in and said, oh, there's a cab, a brand new baby cab in the, in the yearlings pen. And I'm like, oh gosh, one's broken through. Come to find out she is standing there the size of a yearling with a freshly cleaned baby nursing and she's been an absolute rock star ever since i think we gave her the first year off with her baby and then we put her back into the breeding cycle so yeah talk about a lot of people would have just put her down the road you don't want to watch that but i put her just down the road because having a baby at one years old it's not normally good pardon my snaps who's this guy oh, that's agnes's little boy he's all right he's just young there's flippity flop hey wee sweetie girl i know your mum's nearby hey sweet girl hmm oh i know you're an absolute favorite yeah, Mrs. Piper Duck's keeping you. Yeah, you be so. My gosh, the screen is pretty bad. Well. You can't see over there. Well. There you go. Oh, we're zoomed in too. Yep, that's off of that mum that's got half ears. So, so yeah, we just do a walk through. Here's Ian. Ian and I had words yesterday while we were moving them through. Yes, the big cow. I ended up breaking one of the rings of power. See, there's some of that poop there. Ended up breaking one of the rings of power, rings of power, rakes of power. There's her baby there. Because she was putting the head down. Once in a while, you gotta just get them a wee reminder. There is a, there is a boss. And the boss only stands for so much boisterousness, so. Yeah, I'm gonna do the rest of my walk through because I don't like being distracted while I'm walking just in case somebody comes up behind me that's in a particularly bad mood. So yeah, bring you back. You know you've got lakefront property. We got a moat, everybody. Yeah, this happens for about a week or so in the spring. Water sits, 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 and backs up. First and foremost, the water on the downside is not getting away because of the big snowbank here. Once it goes, then the water pushes through this snowbank and then it pops. I can't come in here with the loader and help it along. Most of the time I don't have to, but more and more ground. Then it will be rushing down through here. Well, scratch that, the last uh, clip you saw. Literally, one hour later. Absolutely hammering down through here. That's craziness. I just drove back from town, picking up some stuff. And that happened. So it's been burrowing underneath the snow to the culvert and she's broke through. So we just got to, this has got to break through here. I might go and get the low bucket on and uh, just knock a hole through that because I need that water to let go because it's backing up to the workshop. Okay. Hey, Ed Gosling. <laughs> yeah, this is ours. This is our first Hereford. Our second, that's when it's called Astro. Second one's called Quinn or another pen. So her programming's quite far along. 
considering she's just a year old now. Yeah, coming along really nice. She's a doll though. Yep. Now, she comes off a really nice mama. And then there's our peanut, which is the other red white face, but she's actually a three tone. See, she's tan, red, and white. So, this wee girl here, you go like this. That's her mom. That's Eddie. That's her grandma. That's Eddie's mom. So, the three generations in these two pens. That's right. You're royalty. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, another pipe just dropped out. This whole area, as you can see by the ice up here, was about a foot up this afternoon and then it came back after coffee time. Um, yeah, every so often it just does that. So, um, yeah, they're all starting to pop open, which is great. What do you think there, Duchess? Yeah. Duchess is a second caver. We've only had one of this crew of 20 that calved last year that's ca that's calved again. The other nine have all been first time or three year olds, so it's good. I got impatient. I'm sorry. I, I, I got impatient. So I'm going to bust this little piece and then I'll bring you back. And ironically, just that little bit running because that water being dark has got a bit of temperature to it. I think if you put a thermometer in, you'd find it was probably close to five, six degrees. Um, so yeah, it running across the ice, because that's ice at the bottom there, it will be melting it and wearing it away. So yeah, I guarantee by morning, That'll be gone. Most of it will be gone. So, I'll do a before and after so yeah, you can see the difference. It's a lot of water. Probably by next week, these fields will be bare. That field won't take much to do it because, well, let's see. All this blinking snow is over there down there and here and over there oh well so just back from the co-op had to go buy some uh, driveway salt to put down the drains to get the last ones flowing and here's a perfect example of packaging so it's a bucket it's the co-op brand rock salt bucket Brand new, just opened it. I just pulled that tab. Yeah, three fifths full. Packaging. There you have it. No longer lakefront property. Still have a bit of a moat. This site is getting caught up. This side, the water level has dropped at least four or five inches just through the night since you last saw me cutting this with the loader. So yeah, it's already making its own way through it. I think at this point, it's pretty well caught up with what the ditch can handle. So, this will help her dry out. Yeah, you can already see a difference in one day. Oh, well, after uh, watching many videos on the old YouTubes, this is where we're at. So this is the problem. Apart from the lack of space, um, one of the big issues is, thanks to the Japanese that build these, uh, the wiring harness that comes up through this hole here up into the joystick when you're taking the joystick off you have to get a 
multi-plug pin tool to undo all the pins inside this multi-plug uh, de-pin it and pull all the wires up out so you can keep turning the joystick enough threads up and out of this little doohickey universal guy because you need this to come off to then take this plate off which locks the pistons into these valves so you have forward right track forward left track back right track back left track so that's why that's square and you look at this one if i can get it up this is triangular and <laughs> triangular oh my god it's late it's late everybody give me just yeah it's diamond shaped not square so the reason for that is the forward valve is dropping the loader the back valve is picking up the loader this valve is tipping the bucket this valve is picking up the bucket so yeah different function styles so where's the problem so these are the pistons that you push and lower the spring loaded as you can see so these are the offenders so as you can see there's an o-ring on the outside right there that is probably not in the greatest of shapes but it'll get changed anyway where we're going is let me see if i can do this one-handed so i'm trying not to get these mixed up i don't know yet because normally from what i can see from the online forms uh, when you're doing a high hour machine you replace these because apparently this shaft here can get uh, quite worn that's not the problem see that o-ring there that's what's caused all of this these four that little skinny o-ring and all four of those and all four of those is what has caused this. And you saw what's underneath there. Absolutely. Absolutely minging. So yeah, all eight of these have to come out. Uh, there's a local place says if I can get them the O-ring, they might be able to source me. Because uh, they said it's a standard. Oh, they had a special word for it. Flat, convex, concave, whoopty doopty, whatever. So, yeah, I'm going to take that o ring, that o ring, and take it to them at uh, Brandon Bearing, who are the owners of Grant's Welding in Verdon, where we had the drive shafts done. So, because they do bearings and hydraulics as well. So they said between them and their parent shop in Brandon, they should be able to find these. So, oh, that'll be so nice. Like I said, get them all done, get this tidied up. And then at some point, we're gonna park this over there, lift the cab, take all these shields and clean this machine. Exercise the demons. Mm. Oh gosh, yeah. So, that's going to be a lovely little job to tidy up when I'm done. Because I just snagged the wires. Figured I don't have time to be messing around with that. They're just switches. I'll cut the sheathing. I'll, I've got those uh, solderable uh, connectors. Shrink wrap them. It'll be good. Once this is clean and once there's no more oil leaks. And I put uh, shrink wrap over it. It's in here. You'll never know. Oh, okay. Okay, let's get on. Yep, that's for scale. So we can pick that up. See, there's a little sort of a groove, sort of a hollowed outness. See, you can't just go firing in just a normal O-ring. 
So that's where we're at. So outer o-ring, not as bad, but I'll change them anyway while I'm there. That. I'll take this to show them because there's no, there's no grooves, there's no bevel or anything to it. It's just scuffed. So I'll take it to them and see what they think. How's your Saturday going? I think that's what you call a drying wind. Ironically, one of the things I love most about this yard is during these big, low, big storms, it sounds like the ocean where I grew up because now I see sun. 23 years of my life was spent within a, a bullet's throw of the uh, ocean, the Irish Ocean. So, yeah. yeah. Checked over everybody, everybody's good. No calves yesterday, nothing today so far. Fed the uncalved cows. Went to get ready to go and get these guys bales and these guys bale. And the black one is on the outside of that fence. It managed to remove this little gate. Yes, I know it's kind of chintzy put in here, but it was tied nonetheless. Managed to get it undone. Yeah. So, he walked his big chunky uh, butt out and squeezed around the corner here and wandered around and went completely banana. So I managed to get the tractor and feed uh, bale processor at the end of the feed rail. No, he squeezed over the tire of the bale processor and round to where I just put the hay out for the uncabbed cows and was acting like an absolute goofball. So, 911 to Mrs. Piper Doug, who was up in the office, right at that window, said the, ma the magic words, bull's out. So she booked her down here. She managed to help me get him wrangled to move the tractor around, get that gate open, managed to keep Jerry back because he was acting like a goofball got Mac back in here by that point the cows all think they're going out to the pasture so they're all going mental so Mrs. Piper Dog held down the fort I ran and got these guys a new bale they weren't out but they were getting down and they get kind of moody when you don't have a fresh bale in so instead of working on getting the last of the drains freed up I've got to get this piece of wall in I don't need to worry about this one, but at least that part there, I gotta get it in. So I'll bring you back when it's done. Well, the last of the uh, drains is still not busting free. Uh, you know what will make it uh, all of a sudden bust free? Is if I go to all the bother of setting up the water tank in the truck, going hauling water, Pulling the pressure washer out, setting up the uh, the mold uh, hoses with the digger for burrowing through the lines. I'll get it all set up. That's that's when the drains will fall out. So that's my plan. I'm gonna test my theory. Let's see, you know how you can tell it's spring. I'm pulling bales out of the triple stack, and they're not exploding. <laughs> Yep, that's how you can tell the weather. As you get further up the pile, the straw piles get smaller, smaller, and then you just get chaff. Oh, glory. The reason that one is ahead because uh, this stuff was piled last year. That stuff was piled two years ago. So it's a little bit more bonded. But uh, another week, and I guarantee you that pile is going to start freeing up. By that point, we'll be ready for it because we have bales there. We have bales along where the grain bins are going. And we still got to get used up. This is used up because I need these bales out of here before we let the animals out to this paddock. 
because we are going to graze this paddock off before we plow it. Um, this, it will come back a fair bit, but I don't want to punch it to bits because I don't want the ground absolutely rock hard. So, get these bales used up and then I'll start tying into that one. So yeah. Uh, ready. Can't even tell if you can make that out. Yeah, you can just see a tiny bit at the bottom of the sun that's missing. Yeah, apparently, that's as much as we are going to get up here in Kanakistan. Yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. Oh, the portal is opening. Yeah, okay. There's Superstars Kid. And there's Bo. Yep, if that's Bo, that means that's his tie. Hey, sweet girl. So yeah, the uh, red heifer, in-calf heifer, that was the thumbnail for last week's video, 
is Bo's oldest sister, Ty's oldest girl. So yeah, right now Ty has a daughter about to cab over there and a daughter who's about to meet the bull this season. So yeah, she's starting her own little family, even though she comes from royalty. And then we've got this beast of a cab. Yeah, he's a thickums, aren't you, Bo? Yeah, he's getting all of the cream. So yeah, he's from, this is from the beauty line. That's why the oldest girl has the name Beauty because Ty's mum no, is no longer with us. And then this is from Superstar, which came from the jet. Now, some of you might remember last year the, the sad thing that happened where the, the old girl that had a heart attack while cabbing and died and we lost the cab too. That's this one's. Uh, see if I can do this right. His great grandmother. I think that's how it works. Um, <laughs> still going at it, eh? So, before I wrap the video up, what are we doing now? Well, this drain is tentatively running and that drain is tentatively running. These next two drains are not running and I see the screen has gone dirty again. Anyway, so we ran the gas pump as you'll have seen in the previous clips. Me and the boss lady and you really have to babysit that um, but once you get down it won't feed in quick enough um, so what i'm doing now is i'm running the sump pump over here because i was doing some investigating here with the pinch bar and it looks like the down pipe the reason we can't find it is it looks like it's got dislodged up and fallen over and is in the ice so i think maybe because it got popped out of the T down there. There's some shale and stuff that's falling into the pipe. So that's why this is not getting away. So we're going to pump it down as low as we can. Try and dig that out. Solve that. And then hopefully get this place dried up somewhat. So yeah, this can sit and run away for a while now. So Anyway. Oh my gosh. So yeah, we've had no babies for three days. This will be day number four. So yeah, we've had, had a bit of a lull. So we had a bunch of non, and then we had uh, a couple of days with a bunch. And then we had a couple of days none, then we had ones, and then we've had nothing. But we have a whole bunch circling, so. And the diatomaceous earth is going down an absolute riot. They're almost done this tub for the second time. Just set up a tub over in that pan there. So, because the first signs of Kind of dirty bums are showing up over there. These ones seem to be, for the most part, doing good. If they do have dirty bums, they never suffer for it, so. Anyway, so hopefully the next time we see you here at the Shire, there'll be some more new babies on the ground. Isn't that right, Flip Flop? So, yeah, it's goodbye from Bo. Goodbye from Flippity Flop. Hi, sweet girl. And it's a goodbye from me, and we'll see you all in the next one. Oh, roll on spring. Teddy bye, everybody. <laughs>